Karen Jetley Life. Hi guys, welcome to my channel and today in this video we are going to discuss Engels law. So guys, if you are studying concurrent programming or you are studying parallel processing, all of you must be aware of this Engels law. So today in this video we are going to discuss what is Engels law and how it affects the speed up and performance in a multiprocessor environment. So guys, for the full video, all of you stay tuned. So guys, before we start with Engels law, I would like to discuss something called as speed up with you. Speed up. So guys, what is a speed up? Now in speed up, they says if single processor finishes one program in one unit of time or in some amount of time. So then how much time will multiple processors require to finish that? Okay, for example, if we have one processor, okay, if the number of processor, let it be donated by n. If the number of processor is n, n is equal to 1, okay. So then how much time that processor will take to finish one task, okay. For example, for one processor, the time is t1. For one processor, the time is t one. So suppose it takes for in our example, suppose one processor takes one second to finish one task. Okay, so one processor takes one second to finish one task, then how much time, how much time n processors will take to finish that task? Obviously, if we do a simple maths, so if the number of processors are n, then the time required to finish that task becomes 1 by n, isn't it? If one processor finish one task in one second, okay? Now suppose if we have two processors, we have two processors, for example, n becomes 2. So ideally, ideally, so time taken by n processor should be 1 by 2, for example, 0.5 seconds that is 0.5 second obviously how much is speed up speed up is double the speed up is now what is the speed up speed up is time required to finish some task by one processor divided by the time required to finish the same task by n processor for one processor it is one for n processor it is 0.5 so then what is the speed up Time required by one processor 1 divided by time required by n processor. Now here the number of processors are 2.5. So speed up is 2. So speed up is 2. And guys, if we pay attention to it, it makes a sense. It makes sense. If one processor is finishing something in one second, two processors ideally should finish that in half amount of time and the speed up is 2 so so it should be double fast as compared to the single processor okay so this guys is called as speed up okay and when we follow this approach for the speed up okay so what we feel is the speed up should be linear linear means if the number of processors increase the speed up should also increase or the processing time should decrease in a linear fashion for example if we take a graph okay if we make a graph okay so on one side on x-axis we have number of sorry on x-axis we have number of processors okay and here is the speed Okay, so if one processor time taken one, if two processor, so then so on. Okay, it should speed should keep on going up, 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 isn't it? Here are the number of processors, and here is the speed up. So, more the number of as the processor number increases, the speed also increases. The speed also increases okay ideally it should be like this but guys in real time 
okay in real time this is not the case in real time let me cut it with the red pen in real time this is not the case so what happens in real time what happens in real time in real time we have something called as Engels law we have something called as Engels law which says this is not the case okay so only the number of increasing the number of processors will not increase the speed of processing okay Engels law says there are another factor factors involved which can affect the no not which can which affects the speed up which affects the speed up and those factors those factors are the factors which state how much part of the program which is being executed is a serial and how much part of the program which is being executed is parallel how much so these two factors they affect the speed up these two factors they affect the speed up okay so guys before we proceed further quickly i will tell you serial part and parallel part now what happens what happens now when we use you know in a program okay we use many different types of structures okay so basically our program is made up of data structures some processing something something and many things right so when we talk about serial part when we talk about serial part in our program if we are using okay some serial operations like traversing a linked list now all of you know linked list is a serial data structure okay so there is no way we can traverse our linked list in a parallel fashion isn't it for example we have linked lists we have arrays isn't it so all these they contribute to the serial part of the program isn't it and at the same time in our program if we are using graphs or we are using trees all these are parallel structures okay so they contribute to the parallel part of the program so in serial part what happens we have to wait for one instruction to finish until we can start the another instruction in the serial fashion one by one or one after another but in parallel part we can perform concurrent operations in parallel part we can perform concurrent operations so guys angle law say the speed up is dependent upon how much percentage of the program is serial and how much percentage of the program is parallel how much percentage of the program is parallel okay and in next part of this tutorial we are going to discuss Engels law and we will see how it the parallel and the serial percentages affects the speed up so guys now coming to Engels law as I discussed few minutes back so what is Engels law it states the speed up is dependent upon two factors okay actually it is dependent upon three factors the part of the program serial the part of the program which is parallel and total number of processors which is donated by n let us donate the serial part by s let us donate the parallel part of the program or the parallel percentage by p and let us donate the number of processors by n so guys if we have one single processor if we have one single processor okay t1 okay so then how much time it will take to execute the program it will take time required to execute the serial part plus time required to execute the parallel part if the number of processor n is equal to 1 if n is equal to 1 okay so if we have n number of processors we have n number of processors as we discussed already discussed if we have t n so then this is our new formula that this is our new formula then it will be 
total number of time required to process the serial part plus the total number of time required to process the parallel part divided by n divided by n so then what it will be s plus p divided by n s plus p divided by n so then what it will be it will be for the n processor and what this equation will be used it will be used for a single processor and this equation will be used for n processor okay so now guys now guys if we say total number of time used by a single processor let it be one let it be one okay suppose t1 is one so then t1 is equal to s plus p t1 is equal to s plus p and from here we can compute s is equal to one minus p s is equal to one minus p means serial part is equal to one minus the parallel part serial part is equal to one minus the parallel part then we can replace this equation in this then we can replace this equation in this so then what do we get tn what do we get as tn we get as tn is equal to 1 minus p plus p divided by n 1 minus p plus p p divided by n so this is the total time required this was the total time required to finish a task by n processor and we divide the program and it is dependent upon how much part of the program is a serial and how much part of the program is parallel and what is this this is called as Amdahl's law okay so what we were thinking so if total time required by one processor is one and for n processor it will be one divided by n but Amdahl's say no it will not work this way so total process uh, total time required to finish the task is dependent upon number of processor plus is dependent upon how much percentage of the program is serial and how much percentage of the program is parallel now guys in this case what is the speed up in this case what is speed up so speed up will be how much time single processor does to finish a task as compared to how much time multiple processors does to finish a task so what will be speed up according to Amdahl's law it will be one if one is the time required by a single processor divided by time required by multiple processor 1 minus p plus p divided by n so this will be the actual speed up and this is what is happening in reality this is what is happening in reality so guys i hope you understand up to here i hope you understand up to here okay so now we will do some examples now we will do some examples and in that examples i will show you so how actual speed up we get okay how much in reality the speed increases by increasing the number of processors so guys so guys in this example let us assume this so let us assume the total number of processors are 10 the percentage of the program which is C parallel is 60 and the percentage of the program which is sequential is 40 so then what will be the speed up the speed up formula says 1 divided by 1 minus p plus p by n okay so 1 divided by 1 minus p so this is percentage when we compute it for 1 it becomes 0.6 so 1 divided by 1 minus 0.6 plus p divided by n and what is n here n is 10 so 1 minus 0.6 plus 0.6 by 10 gives you the speed up of 2.1 one seven okay so 2.17 guys in the beginning what we thought 
in the beginning what we thought if one processor is doing some work in one second and the 10 processor should finish it by 10th of that second but in reality how much is the speed up we came we came with 2.17 only double by increasing the size of processors number of processors time 10 times we can only achieve double the speed okay now similarly guys now let us keep the number of processors as 10 and let us assume the parallel and sequential part let the parallel part be 80 let the parallel part be 80 and let the sequential part be 20 now what they are saying now this program is more of parallel 80 percent of the program is parallel and 20 percent of the program is sequential so then what we get here is 1 minus 0.8 plus 0.8 divided by 10 1 minus 0.8 plus 0.8 divided by 10 so then what will be the speed up after doing the maths the speed up will be 3.5 seven the speed up will be 3.5 seven so then what will be the speed up here the speed up is going to be no let, let us write 2.1 7 then 3.57 okay in this case in this case now what happened now we got little higher speed up how we got little higher speed up because the program is more parallel and less concurrent okay now let us assume let the program be 90% parallel and 10% sequential 90% parallel and 10% sequential so what comes here is 1 minus 0 0.9 what comes here is 0 0.9 divided by 10 so then what will be the speed up it will be about 5.26 about 5.26 so then if the 90% of the program is parallel, still 10 processors cannot make it faster 10 times. Still, still 10 processors cannot make it faster 10 times. They can only make it faster 5 times. So then what is the speed up in this example? It will be 5.26. Now guys, again let us assume 99% of the program is parallel which in reality which is impossible 99 percent of the program is parallel and 0.1 percent of the program is sequential and 0.1 percent of the program is sequential so here comes 1 minus 1.99 and here comes 0.99 divided by 10 so after doing the maths what will be the speed up speed up will be 9.17 okay so guys now if you look at this scenario if 99% of the program is parallel then the speed up again is not 10 so then the speed up we can achieve up to 9 times okay but which is a very very rare case or I, I would say it is an impossible case we cannot have a program which is 99% Parallel. But still, in this scenario, what will be the speed up? 9.17. 9.17. So, guys, I hope I made myself clear and I hope you understand Amnel's law and the variables which affect the performance and speed up. Okay. So, guys, that's all for today so this was amdal's law and it is used a lot in concurrent and parallel processing i hope you understand it and guys if you like my videos please subscribe to my channel and i'll be uploading more and more video tutorials on the topics related to information technology and all of you thanks for watching and stay tuned and guys before i leave if you have any comment or feedback please leave it in the comment section i will try to respond to each and every comment as soon as possible so all of you guys thanks for watching and see you next time